Okay guys, I'm doing this one a little bit different than I typically do. I like to film live with you guys. Unfortunately, I already started on this one. Well, it's not really unfortunate. Um, the issue with this vehicle is I found a vacuum leak and what I wanna do is to fix that leak and then show you our fuel trim numbers when we're finished to make sure that we don't have any other problems. So let me start it first and let you guys see what it looks like live. Okay, so take a look at our short-term, long-term fuel trim. That's these top two. And um, we can see that we're at about 40% total. And I don't have an RPM pit on this list, so I'll just give it to you. I'm, I'm at idle right now. We'll take note of this uh, mass airflow grams per second number, maybe two, for where our leak is, 335, 339, 340. All right, I'm gonna raise my RPM now. See if this... Uh, Right there, and then the memory is. I was looking at the long term. See what I'm when I'm off the throttle. I'm at idle. The second I touch the throttle, watch the long term. It goes down to two. It's almost like it's this battery has been disconnected recently. Yeah, because look at the short term. It hasn't corrected yet. Um, the system hasn't learned yet at this RPM. Yeah, so this had the battery disconnected some complicated stuff sometimes with fuel trims I'll throw in a, a hyperlink to a video I've done on understanding short-term and long-term trim um, raising my rpm right now just getting a total trim number of these two and really why I would want to do this is to to direct me as to what type of lean condition I have and you notice the numbers have improved I, I mean I'm I'm about 11%, you know, we add the two of these together, maybe 16% total trim. Now this is, and that's, that's hovering normally now. So about 11% at 1700 RPM. I'm gonna raise this up to like 25. This number is going to come down even more, this 11. Again, all of the cells have not learned yet in here from this battery being disconnected. But here's the point. Look how bad it is at idle and how much improved it was. So now we're idling. How much improved it was at higher RPM. So this is classic vacuum leak condition. Uh, the customer replaced the injector O-ring Obviously, he didn't fix all of his lean condition. Let's go under the hood and look and see what I found. You guys have seen me in the past use a water bottle to find vacuum leaks, and we actually did that on this. Could not locate the vacuum leak, so I'm using a smoke machine now, just using compressed air. And what I'm going to do is go into the brake booster. It's just the easiest place to do it on this one. Next thing I'm gonna do is take this air intake tube off. It's fine. Okay, next step is just gonna put a cone there to block it. I'll just use this to hold it on a little bit. And then we'll fire up the smoke machine. This thing actually has a, a good volume of smoke compared to my other one. I really like this machine. All right, so you see the smoke coming out right there under the intake. Let me get you a close up of where that's coming from. As you can see, that's a pretty good amount of smoke. And it's actually this breather tube that was not put back on properly. And so what I'll do is, uh, well, actually that makes sense. We couldn't find that with water, but um, what I'll do is just put this back on and then we'll go back inside the vehicle and make sure that we don't have any other lean conditions and that'll be based on our fuel trim numbers. Uh -uh. No way, dude, I got it. It's on. All right, easy fix. Let's make sure we have no smoke anywhere else. I'm not worried about the smoke coming out of my little makeshift plug there. It's just not a perfect seal. Yeah, that's just coming out of there. That's not a problem. Just make sure we don't have smoke anywhere else.
All right, I don't see leaks anywhere else, so I'm gonna put this back together. We'll go back to the scan tool. Dude, this smoke machine is awesome. Just the volume level compared to my other one, it's a night and day difference. This will be nice for Small EVAP day, leaks. Small. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the next one we're doing is an EVAP leak. Okay, this is um, starting this vehicle up without clearing any memory. We're going to focus on our trim numbers here and see if we fix this. If we did fix it, what we're going to see is a counter on the short term that this one will go way negative compared to the positive long-term number, and that'll tell us whether or not we have to look further or if we fix the vehicle. Just started it, still an open loop. Watch the short term. I wanna see this go very, very negative. So far so good. Awesome. Negative 17, positive 22. That's a total trim of five. I like that. Plus and minus 10% is considered normal. Idle feels a little bit rough right now and as it, as it should, I would think, as this is balancing out. I like that. This is looking even better. Positive three, positive two maybe. That's a fix. If that's all the info we had, if I pause that and we were at, you know, 15 and 16, negative 15, positive 16, for example, that is a fix. And I think this is important information because you're working at a shop and, and you do a repair like this, you want to make sure the customer's check engine light doesn't come back on. And what we know right now is with these numbers, that P0171 fault code is not coming back. There's no reason to test drive the car and have the monitors run and do all the things that you guys worry about to make sure the customer's check engine light doesn't come back on. Man, if you, if you know how to read your fuel trim numbers, there's no reason to do that. This vehicle is a fix. Last time, here's a shot, frozen picture of that data as this thing was relearning counter fuel trim numbers that means this is a fix and again for you guys that need more training on short-term long-term fuel trim i'll throw up that hyperlink for the video that i've done in the past make sure you turn your captions on so you can see it thanks guys have a good one